Hey y'all, it's Anime Game Man. Today I'm going to be reading the ninth episode of Doro, and good lord. I mean, with this episode and episodes like 5 and 6, Doro has become by far my favorite anime this season. It's like, I don't even think I need to like, think about that. Hell, I don't even think I had to even think about the score of this episode after watching it during my live reaction, but fuck it. Since it's a reveal, keep y'all in suspense while I talk about the episode first. Now, what I really love about this episode was we finally get some context as to why Doro acted the way he did. I mean, she did. Oh, <laughs> good lord. Okay, first let me start off by saying the episode did reveal Doro to be a girl. And that just took me a bit to, like, to take in a bit, but I was like, yeah, alright. That's cool, that's cool. And, um, for starters... It puts into context the first episode, why Doro was throwing walks, doing um, some semi, like doing stuff like lying in order to survive and all that, because, well, Doro has seen some, gru some gruesome shit, like, in the situation where both of her parents died, and I'm assuming that's pretty much what caused her to pretty much just try to find ways of surviving by any means necessary, so... I kind of like how this episode finally gives us that, the reasons why she acts the way she does. So that was hella cool. And then, even though the father of Dora only had like, I'd say maybe like 12 minutes of screen time, he made hell of an impression. Because he was the leader of this squad that was pretty much just taking on samurais. A sort of a vengeance because samurais were taking down the villages. I like how in one of the later sequences it gives us some context because they want to get rid of these villages so that the enemies they're going up against can't really use it against them. So again, I like how this episode again introduces the great morality because while well, yes, you do have Daigo's men burning down some of these villages, at the very least he's doing it for a semi-reasonable purpose which is to take down his enemies. But at the same time, he's making more enemies. In the case in point, you have people like uh, Doro's father who resisted people like Daigo. So it's like a cycle, like a cycle of war. And I like how this episode emphasizes that, emphasizes that pretty well. And it emphasizes the great morality pretty well and figuratively and literally because this episode had a beautiful blackish, whitish, grayish style with like red used in situations where someone bleeds or when there's a fire just to emphasize the effect of when there's violence. So I thought that was a great territorial choice in this episode when it came to flashbacks. It made this episode much, much more memorable. And it made the death scene of Dororo's father more memorable when because for one, he gets betrayed by one of his for, former men, Itachi, and then he pretty much um, barely survives but he gets injured. They end up in a village that gets burned down, but then one of the people that Doro's father confronted him in the past that he spared pretty much ends up recognizing him and then it ends up in a situation where Doro's father did manage to kill off the man in the village, but then he himself dies when he gets speared, but at the very least he takes down the guy that speared him with the member of the line of, this is how he uses a spear and he takes a motherfucker down with him at least. So all in all, the dialogue in this episode, it had rhythm. And that's also what made the story nice this episode. It was just really, really beautiful in a gruesome way. And then the way Doro's father went down was sad. And then the way Doro's mother was sad too. Like, she pretty much died of hunger. And there was a scene where she gets food. But it was... But the thing is, she only gets enough food for one person. I like how in the sequence, even though she has no bowl, she takes the soup on her hand and it gets burned. But she does it to like give Doro some food and that was also a beautiful and well animated scene. I was taken aback. It made me feel emotion. It made me appreciate Doro even more as a character just to see her struggles. And then when Doro's mother died, it made, it made me feel sad when she died too. And I was like, yo, this shit is just depressing. And that was a great way of showing off why Doro has that do or die attitude now. It's, really helps make the previous episodes have much more impact. And simultaneously, I like how this episode still keeps you on your toes because at the end, when it shows a Daigo pretty much get the information that 
this um, individual that took down some of his men might be like this baby that was born with like uh, without any body parts and I was like yo that shit is crazy it's like this episode some of the episodes are episodic but it always makes you remember that Daigo is there even though he's not there directly you feel his presence somehow in this episode it was felt greatly really really greatly like when some of Daigo's men alongside Itachi took down some of Dororo's father's men and then now when it's revealed that they gave him the information about this um, man with prosthetics which was well they didn't show this person the person that gave off the info was the person that Hakimaru spared due to Dororo telling Hakimaru to spare that individual so it's like fucking irony right there where Doro was looking out for the best intentions of Hakimaru, but in the end, it's going to end up probably backfiring spectacularly, and I cannot wait to see where that's going to lead. So all in all, this episode had a lot of great elements from a story and character standpoint, and we had a bit of more development when it comes to Hakimaru because he didn't abandon Doro at all when Doro was sick, and he even took him to like this nun's place. So. You even get some character development for Hakimaru and a large amount of characterization for Dororo. And all in all, that's why I felt they were good from the character and story standpoint. It was phenomenal. The art and animation were phenomenal. For sure. It's like, there's no ends and buts. Everything in this episode looked beautiful. The soundtrack and voice acting were great. And that's why I'm going to rate this episode a 10 out of 10. I have no complaints at all, and I cannot wait to see what's going to happen next week. So anyways, guys and gals, these are my thoughts on the episode. Comment down your thoughts in the comments section below. Rate the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Subscribe for more. All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.